Welcome back into the next video of our two-part section in this iOS and Firebase series. Today we are going to be learning how to grab data from the database and then show it to our user when they have signed in or they have updated something or they are looking at posts or so, something along those lines. So we will be working with more database functions and learning how to grab data and then present it to the user. Before we ju uh, jump in, we did not uh, we did not save the status of our user when they sign up or they sign in. We didn't create a defaults. Uh, variable which checked if our user was signed in or not or they were signed up and if you look in our home or welcome view controller we have our if defaults pool is user signed up we never set the is user signed in variable so that is something we need to set once the user is successfully logged in so if we head on over to our sign up view controller we can just do defaults oh. we should probably create our object so up here inside the function we'll say let defaults equal user defaults standard and then defaults dot set and we'll call this true and boom and then we're going to do the exact same thing in our sign in view controller once our user has successfully signed in we can also change up this function and put it also inside our service view controller or our service class but we'll leave it there just for now so once our user has, has successfully logged in we'll also create a let defaults equals user defaults dot standard and then we'll just call it there perfect so now when the user logs in or they sign up our variable is set to true and then our welcome view controller checks if our user signed in or not all right so let's just quickly run this and test it out uh, you can also find this code on github if you're a bit behind or you got stuck somewhere i have uploaded it all onto github the link is in the description below so let's sign in with our user2 at gmail since this is the user that has the information And if you check here, our user at gmail.com, we never set the information for that specific user. We might do that down the road, but for now, we'll just be sticking with our user too at gmail.com. So let's jump right into the getting the user's information. What we'll do is we'll create a static function inside our service class as well. We'll call it static func get user info. And what we will be doing is we will be setting, we will be grabbing our values from the database and then plugging them into user defaults since user defaults allow us to keep the same variables throughout the application as long as the application has been deleted or the user hasn't signed out. So what we'll do is we'll create another reference and this will be our database dot database and then dot reference. And then we'll also want to grab the UID. Since we will be looking inside our current user unique identifier, we need to grab their specific information. And what we can do is we can actually set up a guard on this to check if our user identifier is logged in and if they are not. Or we'll just simply return print user not found. Perfect. All right. Now what we'll do is we need to grab our reference and then grab our users and our unique identifier and then grab the values inside that user. So it's the same thing, same exact process as we had up here. You can just simply copy and paste that. We're going inside our master, then inside our child of users, which is here. And then we are going inside our current user or the unique identifier for that specific user. So next what we'll do is we will remove that exclamation point and then we are going to call dot observe. We're going to look inside our database and we are going to grab any of the dictionary values we have. And then we're going to upload that to our defaults variable. So we'll have we'll call two different data types here. So this uh, right here, the d data event type, we are going to be looking for the value. So the specific value inside the each dictionary. And we can quickly also create a default since we will be storing our information in the user defaults. And if we just double click, we can call this snapshot. And then if we double click right here, we'll call this our error. All right, and the same process will go for this. We want to create our on success and our on error completion blocks. And if there is an on error, we will just call error. Perfect. And up here, if you uh, if you remember us creating the signup user, we do not need that return. That was my apologies on that since we were testing beforehand. Since our completion block is called here, it already returns. We just don't need that extra code. And then right here, once our user, once we are able to read in the actual dictionary, we need to check if that dictionary is there. So if let dictionary equals snapshot dot value, since we're grabbing the value of the dictionary inside each object as 
And this is going to be a dictionary, so it will be as a string and then any object in that. So if you look here, we have our, this is a string, the email, and then this is an object. We could have a integer, we could have a double, we could have an array of items, we could have a date, we could have so many things here. And that's why we're just calling it that. And you should, yep, just, there we go. All right, and then we'll open bracket, or open parentheses, and perfect. Actually, what you'll do here is a question mark. Perfect, all right, so now we can actually grab each value inside our dictionary. Once we are able to grab it, we just upload it to the user defaults. So what we can do is we will let's email equals dictionary and it's just a simple email as, and this is a string. And then let name equal dictionary name s string. Perfect. All right. And then what we can do from there is we can actually just set our email. So what we'll do here is we'll just call this our user email key. It's probably best to use uh, a different type of object here, such as an enum or a struct. That would probably make more sense. That way we don't have to type out the for key every single time, but we'll just go simple for now. And then our name and username key, perfect. So once our values are grabbed from the database, we will call on success here and voila, we are all set with our get user information. As you see a quick rundown here, we grab our reference, so the database. We also create an instant a variable for our defaults. And then we check if our UID is there or it's not. And then from there, we just go inside our database, inside the us users, then user, and then we grab each value based on if it exists or not. So next what we'll do is we're going to call this inside our home view control. So first what we'll do is we'll get our service.get user information. And then if it's everything's everything is successfully loaded in, we will call our on success. Otherwise, it'll be an on error. And we can do the same thing here with our values. Perfect. And we can just call this error. It should be unwrapped. Perfect. And then once our user information is successfully loaded in, let's also create a let defaults user defaults a standard. We could create an object, a global variable for the defaults, but I'm just going with a very simple way, I guess. It'd probably be better just create a low, uh, global variable and then from there call it whenever. So once our information is loaded in, let's go grab our user name key and then we'll go into here and then we'll set that welcome in label.txt to welcome in and then our defaults dot string and perfect. All right, uh, don't forget to put self and also unwrap our default stat string. So we don't get an optional. All right, and now we can run it. And perfect, it works. Welcome in Johnny. Our data is grabbed from our database. It goes into the master and then it goes into our users, the unique identifier for the current user that was signed in. And then we just grab that name. So now you have learned how to successfully create a user and then upload information to the database with that user as well as sign in a user and log out a user. And then from there, you've also learned how to grab data from the actual database, depending on each user and their given unique identifier, if they're signed in or not. Uh, what else we will be covering in the next couple of videos, we will learn about updating a user's profile. So there's a way we can upload more information rather than just calling set value here, since set value will, re will refresh all of the data and so if you have a whole bunch of data and then you call set value, you might get into a little bit of trouble. So don't, don't really do that unless you're creating a user for the first time. And that should really do it. And then from there, we'll just go on and continue working with Firebase and iOS and learning how we can create different objects, upload different things, and then also create more users and share. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.